Hello and welcome to today's lesson. I'd like you to start off by writing down everything you can remember about hospitals in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance period. Who ran them, what kind of treatments did they um, provide, anything you can think of. So, hopefully you've remembered that in the Middle Ages, hospitals were often associated with the church. They were often in monasteries and they were run by monks and nuns. They were primarily places for rest and recuperation rather than treatment. In the Renaissance, hospitals changed a bit. And that's because of the dissolution of the monasteries, the religious changes that had taken place. This meant that increasingly, Hospitals were run as charities, charitable foundations. They also increasingly were about treatment rather than just rest and relaxation. We also got more hospitals designed specifically for infectious people. Because previously, infectious people hadn't been let into hospitals. If you're infectious in the Middle Ages, for example, you're a leper, you were sent out to leper colonies or Lazar houses. In the Renaissance, they had specific hospitals for infectious diseases, and these were known as pest or pox houses. Take a look at this image, which shows us a hospital in the industrial period. Hopefully you can see it's a bit different from what they look like in the Renaissance. And reading the caption there, you can see that the woman at the centre of the image is Florence Nightingale. Now, I'm sure you'll have heard of Florence Nightingale before. She is really famous. She's famous as the lady with the lamp, the woman who revolutionised nursing and hospital care in the industrial period. So who was Florence Nightingale? Well, Florence came from quite an upper class background. She was a clever, intelligent woman, well educated. In fact, she's a brilliant mathematician and statistician. Did you know it was Florence Nightingale who created the pie chart? Now Florence was very religious and she felt she had a calling that she should do something in her life more than simply marry a man and have babies. She wanted to help people and she wanted to do this through nursing. Now the problem was that nursing in this period was seen as quite a lower class job. There wasn't a very good stereotype of nurses. They were seen as kind of drunk, stupid, not very competent women. And Florence Nightingale wanted to change that image. When war broke out between Britain and Russia in the Crimea in 1854, Florence went out to the Crimea to nurse for the British soldiers. There she tried to improve the conditions in hospitals. Now, industrial hospitals weren't very clean. They're not like hospitals today. They weren't very sanitary. And in particular, the hospitals in the Crimea weren't very sanitary because they were living in, a, in the middle of a war. It was a war zone. So Nightingale came and she tried to improve the nursing. She brought with her a team of 38 other nurses and they basically got to work cleaning the place up. They demanded 300 scrubbing brushes to get rid of all the dirt near the patients. Uh, they reorganised the place, turning it into somewhere where you could effectively treat soldiers. And they just brought sanitation into the hospital, really. Um, clean bedding, good meals, that sort of thing. Now, Nightingale's efforts had a positive effect on the mortality rate, so it's death rates. Within six months, it had dropped from 40% to only 
Now, Florence Nightingale became really well known in Britain because a newspaper called the London Illustrated News reported on her activities and drew a famous picture of her as the lady with the lamp. So Florence would tend to the soldiers on an evening um, holding a gas lamp because of course they didn't have electricity. She'd move between the different patients' beds and she was said to be a great comfort to these men, kind of like a, a guardian angel. So this symbol of Florence as Lady of the Lamp made it back to Britain. She became really celebrated, a great British hero. Florence wasn't really interested in being a hero, though, but she was interested in using her newfound celebrity to improve medicine back in Britain. So she became great friends with Queen Victoria and she used her influence to set up um, a new training school for nurses and this helped to improve the image of nursing and professionalise it so that it became a high skilled job, something that people might aspire to be because it was respectable. She also redesigned hospitals. And she created what we know as the pavilion plan for hospitals, which was focused on improving ventilation because she believed that uh, disease was called by, caused by miasma. So it was really important to have lots of nice, clean, fresh air. So she improved the ventilation through windows, uh, large rooms, and she introduced separate isolation walls to ensure that infectious disease wouldn't spread. Could you now use page 77 and 78 of the textbook in order to answer the questions on the board? Now we're going to take a bit of a long-term view. We're going to compare hospitals at different points within history. So use the same textbook pages and create this table. I want you just at the moment to concentrate on early modern and 18th century hospitals. What were they like? Now let's think how this had changed by the industrial period. Well, now the industrial um, hospital was split into various different wards infectious patients split from those requiring surgery. There were specialist operating theatres and specialist departments. Cleaning was now really important, so they were far more sanitary. Doctors, who were actually well trained. Uh, nurses, again, who were well trained. And they were particularly run generally um, by charitable institutions. They'd gone from places that were rest and relaxation in the Middle Ages to places of treatment. Now, what I've told the story so far makes Nightingale sound fantastic. But do we over-egg the influence she had? Yes, yeah, she was a great celebrity, but there were other people within the nursing profession who were doing this. And actually, she didn't hugely improve things in the Crimea because she believed that miasma was the cause of disease. She didn't actually um, start getting the, the cause of disease right. Hmm, it might limit her impact. I want you now to watch the YouTube videos here to make some short notes on why she was so important. Could you now make some notes on her time in Crimea using page 77? Could you also complete the 19th century column of your table?
And lastly, can you have a look at this exam question? Now this is a 16 mark exam question, so it's a how far question. You need to do both for and against. So there was a rapid change in the quality of care in hospital in the period uh, 1500 to 1900. How far do you agree? So you have to both argue that there was little change and that there was lots of quick change. Now it suggests you use charitable hospitals and Florence Nightingale but you must also include a third point from your own knowledge. What could you include? Make sure you also include a clear conclusion. Do you agree or do you disagree? 